The High Court has ruled that Cardinal George Pill is innocent, but many in the media are still baying for his blood. They include the stupid, they include the willfully ignorant, the vicious. They include people who claim to be more compassionate than the rest of us, but act themselves like barbarians. Now, they include comedian Andy Lee, who tweeted, Stay at home, everyone, mainly because Pell is back out. And another one, author Clementine Ford, who really is cruising for a defamation, bruising a writ, claiming that I can rest easy in the knowledge that the pedophile I've allegedly championed is free to do it again. How disgusting Clementine Ford is. On it goes, 3 W's Justin Smith. Pell is not guilty but far from innocent. And the ABC's Louise Milligan, who led the ABC's persecution of Pell on false charges, hug your children now that Pell is free. And, AB and the ABC's Barry Cassidy said, don't worry, the High Court has found there was not enough evidence to convict Pell. It did not find him innocent. You are entitled then to maintain your view. Which frankly, Barry, I know you, mate, and I am shocked that you would say such a stupid thing. That is unbelievable. A man is guilty even in my opinion. There is no credible evidence that he is. On that measure, Barry, you're guilty. I'm guilty. Everyone's guilty. I could read out dozens of similarly vicious texts from media figures. Joining me on Newswatch is Jared Henderson, head of the Sydney Institute, columnist with the Australian newspaper and author of the Media Watchdog blog. Jared, the media witch hunt. How serious has it been? How critical has it been in jailing Pell in this grotesque miscarriage of justice? Well, I think it's been critical. You've had a media pile on led by the ABC, but not only the ABC, but they led it, going on for a decade. Now, in such a circumstances, it's very difficult to imagine how anyone could have got a fair trial. Anyone could have got a fair trial in that situation. Uh, but, and particularly in it, the problem was in particular because Victoria is the only mainland state in Australia that doesn't have the opportunity of judge by trial alone. So what you've had is a situation where led by Victoria Police in cooperation with the ABC, as Greg Craven had pointed out, this, this whole web of media parlon against George Pell went on for years. Um, now, in particular, Louise Milligan's book. Now, Louise Milligan's book, published by MUP, um, was, was part of a whole 7.30 program which went for 30 minutes and she also mentioned another issue. Now that program turned on allegations about George Pell's behaviour in a swimming pool in Ballarat and those allegations were withdrawn by Director of Public Prosecution, never went to trial and the second part of her book dealt with the allegations about St Patrick's which the High Court and I think is the most devastating judgment that I've read and I've been reading legal judgments for half a century has has ruled that the Court of Appeal made an error <clears throat> so the, and, and that was also formed part of uh, the, the theme of um, of Sarah Ferguson's recent program so you've had this massive pile on led by the ABC and at every path where it's got to the end, either the DPP's withdrawn it, a magistrate's not proceeded with it, or the High Court has overturned it. This is a devastating situation, but it does demonstrate the massive media pile on, and when we got to the end of it, there was nothing. Now, I want to get on to the ABC because it is taxpayer funded as a national broadcaster and I think has acted, acted absolutely shamefully on this. But just to make sure that people don't think uh, it's only the ABC, you sent me a list of people that you thought were uh, really dominant in the pile, uh, Pell pylon. Uh, I'll just read them out. Philip Adams of the ABC, Richard Acklin, the Saturday paper, Paul Bongiorno, the Saturday paper, disgraceful. Barry Cassidy, I uh, just mentioned, Sarah Ferguson, you just mentioned. Peter Fitzsimons of the nine newspapers. Peter, hang your head in shame, mate. Uh, Ray Hadley of 2GB, who called me creepy for defending George Pell. Ray, I expect an apology tomorrow. Uh, Darren Hinch, disgusting. You, Fran Kelly, the ABC, David Ma, Louise Milligan, Tim Minchin. Tim, not everything's a, a, a song for you, mate. Not everything's a highlight. Your song, Slamming Pell, was a disgrace. Lucy Morris Ma, formerly of the Herald Sun. I'm glad she's no longer there. Elise Sales of the ABC. Tim, Tim Supamasani, former national, uh, uh, our, uh, national discrimination commissioner. And Jack Water for the Canberra Times. Well done, uh, Jared. I don't think you've even got to uh, halfway down that barrel. Now, oh, the, the ABC. The, that's a fraction, yeah. That's a fraction. Well, now, well, uh, the ABC... Yeah, go ahead. 
Let's come back to the Barry Cassidy point. Now, mm. I love knowing Barry Cassidy for two, uh, nearly three decades. I like Barry Cassidy, but what he said today was appalling. Now, I, I don't think he understands much about the law. I could be wrong there. But if you read this case, and if you go to page 2 and again to page 33, the High Court has said that despite the advantages that the jury had, there was a significant possibility that an innocent person has been convicted. So when Barry Cassidy said there's nothing to do with innocence in this case, I mean, if he'd read, if he'd read the High Court, if he has read, and he may have read it, but if he has read the High Court decision, if he's read it properly, he should know that that statement is, is simply false. But it's part of, it's part of now of the agenda of the ABC trying to defend the ABC is the ABC always does, and it's always run by staff collectives, and management won't say or do anything. So that's what you're getting there. So this is just now an ongoing procedure. We're now gone to the next stage uh, in, in spite of the High Court decision. Yeah, well, I think this is a function of uh, an echo chamber, um, uh, Jared. I think I'm seeing a lot of journalists absolutely bewildered by this judgment. They never saw it coming because if you, were, if, if you only listen to the ABC, all you would have heard for years is that George Pell is guilty, is rubbish, is terrible, is a monster, is a this or that. You never heard from an ABC presenter or reporter, they might have had the occasional guest, very occasional, never heard from an ABC presenter or reporter something in his defence. Not once. And uh, it's, so, so it's not just there. I mean, I just had a, seven, a Channel 7 reporter saying, can you come on our show tonight? And because we've got all these Pell haters lined up, we need another voice. And I said, well, surely in your entire network, you've got one person, one journalist who might have said, well, Pell maybe isn't innocent isn't guilty. No, just one. Just one who said, well, maybe the case against him isn't good. She said, no, we don't. And she's right. She's right. Now, yeah. I wonder, you mentioned Louise Milligan's uh, book. Uh, now, ABC reporter Louise Milligan, she's led the crusade of the ABC. They've really got in behind her and pushed it. Published so many, so far unsubstantiated claims, as you pointed out, against Pell. Uh, many of which she retailed in her book, that Slam Pell, which is a real hit job, published by the Melbourne University Press, again, taxpayer-funded. This book was given all sorts of prizes, including the Walkley Book Award, an award from the Melbourne uh, Prize for Literature, and Milligan herself was given the highest honour, the Melbourne Press Club, named the Sue Owen Dixon Chambers Law Report of the Year. Jared, should all those prizes now be returned? Well, I think they're pretty worthless at any rate, most of them, because if you look at the recipients in many cases. Uh, <clears throat> but if you read the book, Cardinal, Louise Milligan's book, and I've read the three editions of it. It's got substantial errors in it, and it's got simply wish fulfillment. I mean, as I recall, Ms. Milligan says that the complainant in the St. Patrick's Cathedral case uh, should be, uh, w was very credible or compelling because he had great eyes. I mean, this is the kind of this is the kind of analysis that wins literary awards in Australia, uh, of, of uh, determined by other journalists. When it's got, I've, I've documented the errors. Uh, many, many, a couple of years ago, I wrote to Miss Milligan, pointing out the errors, and asking her to answer some questions. She refused to answer it, and she fled to her publisher, Louise Adler at MUP, and Louise sent me an email telling me to be quiet. I mean, you, here you had a journalist who's got an award-winning book who couldn't even answer questions about it and who only went on friendly ABC panels and friendly ABC interviews because she knew, because of the mindset in the ABC, that no one would challenge her. She went to literary festivals where all her mates rocked up and everyone agreed with everyone else. No one who cr criticised the Cardinal book ever got the opportunity to engage Louise Milligan on anything. I would call that cowardice. When I'm criticised, I defend myself. When Louise Milligan was criticised, she fled to a publisher. I've never known a journalist to flee to a publisher for protection. And Louise Milligan, uh, Louise Adler, the publisher, who I've known for many years, just told me to shut up. She didn't defend the book. She just said, shut up. And I, uh, I've look, I find it extraordinary. But, but and I'll every, it everything, again. yeah, you do that. Everything about this shows how this was an institute. This, this was the institution, the great interlocking web, ABC, Victoria Police, Victorian Court of Appeal, all these institutions, prize giving committees, Walkley Award committees, all these groups, Melbourne Press Club, joining together, Melbourne University Press, joining together in a massive witch hunt. 
How George Pell didn't kill himself, I don't know. I, I presume it's his faith that kept him strong. Yeah. I, I challenge so. any Australian to imagine whether, if this had happened to you and you were innocent, how would you have survived? It is a shameful, shameful glimpse into how this great monolith, this pack mentality in Australia survives. Jared Henderson, thank you so much for your analysis. I would urge people to follow your Media Watchdog blog on Friday because I am sure you will have plenty more on this. And uh, I must congratulate you on being one of the very few journalists who has put his head up and said this case does not stand uh, muster. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Andrew. I should say...